out live to D- Rabbi Dov Lippin, Chavar Knesset Yesha Tid. Thank you for joining with us. Uh, Shavua Tov. I should say good morning to you in, in Israel. Thank you so much. Shavua Tov. And thank you. So you, you've been on this program before. We've had you on originally from the United States, gave up United States citizenship, a member of Knesset, Yara Lapid. What do you say about all this controversy where people are branding you? Uh, for example, you were by the Russia Shiva. You were Muslim from there, Yisrael. They branded you a Russia. Then they took it back. But they're saying that you're off the path. You're not really Haredi. How do you respond to, to this? Well, first of all, in terms of what happened with, with the Rosh Hashiva, Baruch Hashem, that's beyond, behind us. Uh, you know, we apologize for our misunderstanding, and that happens, and I'm certainly willing to move on, and I, I don't view it as a major uh, controversy anymore. Uh, in general, I think it's very good that the conversation is taking place, that people are all over, as far as I understand it, addressing the issue of you know, why don't we have basic general studies in the Shivas here, and it's something which ultimately will only help. Uh, the B'nai Yeshiva and the Torah world in Israel. And I think it's a very positive step that uh, the conversation is happening and that hopefully we're going to be making these changes. But along the way, uh, I have to be uh, a little bit of uh, on the receiving end of some negative things. That's okay. I think it's still uh, the Shem Shemayim and it's still a good thing to be happening. So let me ask you a question. You, you know, the, basically they're saying you're not Haredi the, and they, some would say they're better to daven with non-Jews than with you. You you consider yourself a Haredi. You went to Nair Yisrael. You live a Haredi lifestyle, correct? Yeah. I, I think that, you know, to start analyzing uh, who's Haredi and who's not, uh, you know, as far as I know, Kakarish Baruch who's the one who's Bochen Kalayot Valev, and it's not really for a bus of a dumb to do that, and I don't judge other people, other people shouldn't be judging me. Instead of focusing on whether I'm Haredi or not, let's focus on what the classic Torah sources say about Kol Torah, She'edim HaMalacha, Sofa Betela, the Zeres Avon. Let's talk about uh, what we sign on the Ksuva, well, I mean, in the Ksuva, when we will cobble on ourselves to the Messiah and our families, and let's focus on the fact that people are starving and people are poor, and that the ultimate goal here is, is to help people out and not in any way to hurt them. So let's get down to the nitty-gritty issues. Do you, so would you like to see the Israeli government enforce math and science curriculum on the whole population, including the Haredi community? The, the program that we're working on essentially says that in order to receive the amount of funding they've been receiving before, there has to be basic math and English in, in, in the curriculum. And uh, science, we're in discussions about, but it'll be some science as well. Now, keep in mind... Uh, and I've been actually tasked, tasked with this. We're talking about using books that are used in, in the yeshivas in America that, that, that great Russia yeshiva and Yadolim have in their own yeshivas uh, and translating those books to be used here. Some of them are already used here. We're not talking about some secular body coming in and deciding what's going to be learned. It's going to be in conjunction with the Vada yeshivas and working together with them. But yes, I'm in favor of uh, not fully funding uh, because it, it, it doesn't make sense for a government to be putting money into a system where I'm talking about economics right now where it's not going to be coming back. So, you're, so your position basically money. is, Rabbi Lippin, is that if the Haredi institutions are going to accept money from the state, then they're going to have to have this curriculum. If they don't want to do this curriculum, they shouldn't take the money from the state. Exactly. Okay, just want to be some. That's a, that's your position. I just wanted to clarify for, for the right, record. Right, but just to add one point. Just to add one point. The budget that we just produced does still say that thirty percent of the funding will continue, even if they don't, because we do think that it's the wrong thing to suddenly cut it off completely. And there's uh, our costs that they have, building wise, etc., which uh, to put them in a situation where they have to start from zero, it would not be fair. So, out of fairness, uh, it still has a thirty percent in the in the budget. Okay, so so that's one issue, just a clarification. Now, the other hot-button issue of a woman of the wall, women who want to pray at Dakota, wearing talis and tefillin, uh, every Rosh Chodesh we see uh, this flares up as an issue. What is your position regarding that? The first step is that we made a major mistake in starting to arrest people uh, to begin with. What I mean by that is, it used to be a small group that would come once a month, and they would do it, and they felt good about it, and it didn't in any way interfere with anyone else, meaning it wasn't stopping me 
from going to the men's side and dominating with Kavana and focusing. I don't have to look at what's happening on the other side. And because it wasn't forcing anyone else in any negative way, we should have just let it be. It's not, it's not something which I view as uh, the worst thing that can happen. And by arresting and by cracking down and making a battle out of it, now all of a sudden you have the whole uh, secular world in Israel on board, a world that wasn't focusing on this issue, which wasn't making this an issue, and now we have a real battle on our hands. So the big mistake was choosing something uh, which was not, from my perspective, worth making a fight about. It's something which in no way was forcing anyone to be over any halachas. And now we have a tough situation at hand where, uh, again, I still believe the best thing to be would just be quiet, let it be, there's a compromise being worked out, and, and move on, and not uh, stoke the flames, which we're doing on our side, the more we fight about it. Now, what is the position? Because there was a newspaper interview where uh, there was a talk about the status quo regarding drafting yeshiva boys uh, to the army. And um, so the question that I see over here that, that came in was that what is your position according to what you told the Times of Israel that you will stick even to the number of 400 annual army exemptions for outstanding scholars? Is that the case? You know, there, are, there, are, there are sound bites that come out once in a while, which are taken you know, not in context. Uh, I was talking about in that interview the importance of building a group of gedolim, of people who are the real Iluyim, and really taking care of them, and really making sure that we're building the gedolim for the next generation, and, and recognizing that. And I said that, from my perspective, the criteria that we're looking for to build that group is going to be even smaller than the 400. I can imagine, you know, finding the, the, the cream of the crop, the people who are really going to be the leaders and giving them a chance to sit and learn and really uh, produce. I was talking about a smaller number. The final the numbers that we're talking about anyway uh, are going to be 1,800 per year. I want to emphasize that per year. There are 7,080 boys per year that come of draft age. Uh, first of all, every single one can learn 18, 19, and 20 without any draft issue whatsoever because those years are critical towards building them in Ruchnius and in their learning. Uh, at age 21, 1,800 per year will be exempt and be supported as they continue their learning. And the other ones don't have to go to a secular unit. They don't. They can go to a Haredi unit. We're going to be investing in more Nacha Haredi and more Shacha Kacho and units where they have Minyanim and learning and, and, and bases that are meeting their spiritual needs. Those who won't serve in the army, and we know there are those who won't, will do national service and once they do that, they're free to go to work. And now I want to make one last point. The day the law is passed, uh, which will be in a few weeks, hopefully, the day after that, for the next few years, any Haredi uh, Bachar or Avreich who wants to go to work can do so immediately, meaning with no service whatsoever. It's basically an amnesty type of program for the next few years, basically saying that those guys who are in the yeshiva just to avoid the draft, go to work, go to the finance your families, and we'll be investing money in programs to help them learn a trade. We'll be working with companies to help them find jobs. But, but, and but it's all about me, helping them in the finance your families. I understand that the jobs that uh, you know the army does help provide jobs, but what? How many Haredim should go into the army? When? What is your position? What is the position of the party? So these are all issues that I think that need clarification. Right. I mean, in terms of the break, you need a breakdown between army service and national service. Right. In other words, first of all, who who would who would go? Is it right away you're talking about? Is it two years down the road? Do that be 18? Is it 21, 22 when you're looking to draft the Haredim into the army or do national service? What is the game plan? What exactly are you proposing? So, so, so maybe I wasn't clear. I'll say it again. It's not at 18. Um, they can learn in yeshiva for 18, 19, and 20. And then at age 21, that's when the plan kicks in. Uh, and then again... Uh, the ones who go to the army can do so in units that are Haredi and have minyanim and have learning, have shiurim, and have bases that take it to their needs. And those who don't do army service will do national service, which also uh, can be some kind of a combination type of program. But the most important thing is that when we pass this law, this doesn't start for a few years. It's very gradual in nature. And in the interim, in the meantime, any Haredi who wants to go to work, even though he's in draft age right now, it's not legal for him to go to work, he can go to work. And that, from our perspective, is critical because there are people who are in yeshiva or kolel, just because they're avoiding the draft, the families don't have money, and they don't really want to sit and learn day and night, and they can just go to work, which is a very important step for the Haredi community. If you would like to call in to speak to Chavar Knesset, Rabbi Dov Lipman, Call us at uh, 212-769-1925, 212-769-1925. You can email us, ZEV, at talklinecommunications.com. You can text us through your cell phone to 
eight zero zero and just uh, put in the Zev with your question and we will get you two one two seven six nine nineteen twenty five. Email questions and wants to know is from what year to what year where you're in Arius for all and when did you get your smicha from there? I was in Mary Israel from ninety one through ninety six and uh I received my smicha from the Yeshiva while I was learning in Cincinnati Colo, so that was probably in about ninety seven. Now, did this, with the whole controversy where you were called name calling and they, were, they said they wouldn't dive in with you, they say you were worse than anybody else, did that affect you, your family? How did you deal with that? Because it's unpleasant, I'm sure, to deal with that situation. Yeah, first of all, there was never a situation of not davening together. I davened in the Mincha and the Knesset and the Chavah Knesset from Degel Torah and Agudas Yisrael and Shas are there. There's a lot of things people read which are just not accurate. Uh, I talk with them, we see each other, especially the guys from Shas, there's this significant conversation and communication. Um, sometimes when you're outside, you don't even realize, uh, you don't even realize that Moshe Gaffney from Degel Torah can get up to the Knesset Bima and, and scream, uh, Chayva Kayim, and then Five minutes later, I see in the in the cassette, uh, cafeteria for the members of the cassette, he's sitting with the other people and talking, and they're and they're laughing. You, people don't see this, and that's unfortunate. People. Say so, is it a performance? A Are you saying that putting on a performance in the cassette and behind the scenes, it's a different ball game? Is I'm, say, I'm saying that's 100 percent true. I'm saying it's 100 percent true, uh, and uh, and there is communication, there is dialogue, and there is discussion, and it's unfortunate. You know, uh, you know, Chazal say, "Ein bach lokas ben shamei vehello, el beis shamei beis hello." There's communication, there's discussion, there's there's dialogue, and and there's some grand things that they have to do in order to you know show their voters and for political reasons. But there is there is a relationship, and there's never been an issue about davening. They've never called me names. We pass each other in the hallway. We say good morning. Uh, uh, I've never felt faced those issues. There are questions that people ask sometimes, and my family, my wife might get a question here or there, but it has not been uh, any way negative in the way it's portrayed, I think, very much in the uh, in the box here. Okay, we're going to get to your phone calls, and I have to add to everybody that we have to all be respectful. We can have a dialogue, a discussion. If somebody gets out of hand, we will cut you off. You want to ask the tough questions? No problem. Respectfully, that's, that's the key word for tonight. Let's go to Yitzchak, uh, Yitz in uh, Brooklyn. And Yitz in Brooklyn, uh, and by the way, if our lines are busy, uh, why don't you email us at, two one, at uh, ZEV at TalkLineCommunications.com. Yitz in Brooklyn, your question for Chavar Knesset, Rabbi Dove Lipman. Hi, good work. Good work. Uh, first of all, it was a pleasure seeing you and your son at the Agoda dinner on Sunday night. Oh, thank you. It was a wonderful uh, dinner. Yes, it was. Um, Chavar Knesset Lipman, you... Say that you're a member of a Haredi community. Our Messiah is Emunas Chachamim, that we go after what the G'day Yisrael say. The G'day Yisrael seem to be very against everything that you stand for, unless there's a lot that I'm missing and everybody seems to be missing. What do you say to that? Um, first of all, uh, a good question, and uh, what I'm going to say right now, I mean respectfully, uh, there is a lot that people are missing, and there is a lot behind the scenes, and I'll leave it at that. Um, I'll just say that uh, the number of um, Haredi young men who uh, want to be upstanding B'nai Torah and they want to be Tamir HaKhamim and they want to feel Haredi but also go to work, uh, and they don't feel that. They feel that when they go to work, uh, they view the second class, and it takes a tremendous amount of courage uh, to make that decision. They don't have the kalim, they don't have the basis uh, to go to work. Adina Bar Shalom, Ravadi's daughter, came to the Knesset and told us that 50% of the boys who come to Hill Haredi College drop out because they don't have basic math and English. Those are the things that we're asking for, and they're things which are very much in line with uh, you know every makor that I know. It's exactly the kind of uh, Yiddish kite that we had throughout the whole gen- all the generations. Uh, even the Chazan Ish, when he wrote about uh, a shift, he wrote about it being a shift, but we're going to focus on Torah only, said that for two generations after the Holocaust to get things started again, and Baruch Hashem, we've done that. Uh, so everything that we're doing is very consistent with, with who we've always been, and therefore, from my perspective, uh, yeah, I, I don't see it as an aberration. I don't see it as something which is trouble. I think it's something which is just going to help a community which very much needs the help. Okay, thank the you for your... The community mm-hmm. may have some issues, but you didn't answer my question. The daily Israel seemed to be against you, yet you call yourself Haredi. 
So either you like are, said, like, or like, you like, like I said, we we have that we have in the Koros, They're very clear, and uh, from my perspective, it, it, it's enough to lean on and to help people who are very much in need of help. And and not and when I say that, I'm saying also it relates to the kids that are going off. There's a lot of issues which taking this approach of just giving, we're not going to lose one gadol, not one, from my perspective, by having uh, math and English. And we're losing kids in terms by the fact that we're not getting math and English. So that's the cheshbon. Anyway, thank I'm you not, for your... I'm, th- not, I'm not debating. I'm not, I'm mm-hmm. not speaking No, you're yeah, speaking very respectfully. No, but he, so I'm, not, I'm not speaking disrespectful, though. No, no, you're not. Um, I, I'm just, we have a lot of other calls. But you're speaking, okay. by the way, I commend you because you're asking good questions. You're asking respectfully, and that's how the dialogue should be. So uh, kudos to you. Uh, I'll let you ask another 30-second question. Um... We have a blazing board, that's why. Okay, so I'll let the next person... I made my point. Good, then thank you for that. Then I'm going to get at least one email question. Kim writes, What does he think about the fact that Ner Yisrael is threatening to remove his smicha, your ordination? That's also... Like I said before, we live in a world of rumors. Ner Yisrael never threatened to take away my smicha. I'm in regular touch with people of the yeshiva, including the yeshiva himself, and there was never a discussion of rescinding my smicha. Okay, let's get some more phone calls uh, coming in over here. Thank you for waiting. And uh, you're on the air with uh, Chavar Knesset, Rabbi Dov Lippin. Go ahead, please. Yes, hello, Rabbi Lippin. Good to work, Good to work, sir. Good to work. I think what you have over here is a major uh, publicity issue that people don't realize what you're trying to accomplish. What? In Israel. Do you agree with that? What do you mean? What do you think he's trying to accomplish? I mean, people don't understand what what the, what Rabbi Lippman wants to accomplish. I mean, do you really want everybody in the army, all the Haredim in the army? I doubt it. Well, do you want all the Haredim eventually in the army? No. Uh, like I said, 1,800 boys per year won't do any kind of service outside of learning. And I want to mention, by the way, it's a, it's a historic moment for the Torah world. This is going to be the first time in the history of the state that... Torah learning is actually being viewed as doing service to Amitra. It's going to be part of the program is that we say we recognize that these boys sitting and learning, it's not that they're exempt, their learning is significant enough that we view it as service. That's a very important point to make, which I didn't make before. Uh, then we said the other boys will do either army service or national service, but volunteer for Zaka or for, or for Mada and St. Paul and Lines, which a lot of them do, by the way. This other thing is also important to make. A lot of Haridim do wonderful things, and now it will be recognized as their service uh, to the country. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Okay. My question is, why don't you have one school... Why do you have to do everything in one shot? If you want to have schools that teach math and English, get one school online to do it, and then others will follow. So one of the things that we're doing, there are already Haredi schools that do have it, and they actually struggle very much. I won't go into all the politics behind it, but they actually have to fight much harder than any other Haredi school to get funding uh, because of the people who are in charge of the funding, ironically. Uh, we're going to make sure that money flows to the Haredi yeshivas that do have uh, math and English, give them the help that they need, uh, and we do think that that will strengthen that approach, and people will see that you can be Haredi, you can be Tamir Chachamim, and you can have the basic general study. So that, that's a very good I mean, point. Here in America, thing. every single school, the most Haredi schools, you know, stop when they teach English and math to all the kids. They do have it. I mean, why would you have that problem in Israel? No, I agree with you. Exactly what you're saying is, is the basis for what we're saying. We're saying that if you look at America, uh, you see that even that, that, that the, and, and by the way, and all those issues in America are producing the Torah and they're producing Torah and at least the boys have the basis for when they want to go to work, they have the basis that they need to have, which they don't have here. So that, that's what we're asking for. That's really at the bottom line. Drop, what we're asking for is that. drop the whole draft issue. Why don't you just start with the start with only implementing a little bit of uh, English and, and math. And 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 just drop the whole issue. It's a good draft. question. The draft issue. The draft issue comes from two places. Uh, one is there's two bad places. One is uh, it, it's very it, it's creating it creates a tremendous amount of polarization in the country when an entire group is said they don't have to, especially if you say they can go to work. Uh, it creates a situation which is untenable in a country to say that one whole group, uh, because of their religious beliefs, 
uh, are not going to be serving at all. And and like I said, when, when, the, the program that they nobody wants. Them in the, Anyway, you, you, you raised some good points. I, I, you raised some good points. I thank you for it, but we're going to have to cover a lot of people waiting to call. We have a lot of emails we want to get to, so uh, thank you for that again. Here's, a, here's an email. I want to commend Rabbi Lippin for standing up for Haredim in Israel. Finally, Haredim can find the men of their own who can represent them in the Knesset. Time to get to work. M.K. Lippin is my idol for putting up. So uh, thank you for uh, that uh, email. Here's another email question. We're going to get back to our busy phone lines at 212-769-1925. Craig writes, how do we adjust to a pluralistic culture when illiteracy exists in true Jewish culture for today's ramification of tomorrow's needs? In other words, how can we permit our children to be assimilated into maxims of extreme culture in today's Yiddish assignment? I broke up. Can you say the last part again? So the last part he wrote, in other words, how do, can we permit our children to be assimilated into maxims of extreme culture in today's Yiddish assignment? Um, I, I don't think we're asking for anybody to be assimilated. I think that, um, if I could use a model for a moment, there is something called uh, Hezri Yeshivas in Israel, where you have boys who are religious Zionists in background uh, who learn a Yeshiva for five, they're in a five-year program, and they serve for a year and a half of that, I don't see them becoming assimilated. I see them uh, very strong in learning. They produce also the Dole Torah, and they actually have tremendous influence on the other way, uh, on the army. Uh, there was a time where there was more of an issue in the army of boys and their religious identity, but uh, nowadays where you find religious uh, uh, mefakim left and right in terms of the people who are running the army, and the army wants to go to such great lengths to accommodate the needs of the Haredim in the army. And I, and I say this, the program that people should really look into, Shaha Kachol, which is an Air Force program, which is now at age 26, where they're trained in electronics and computer science and engineering, and they serve in the Air Force for three years. And, and you, you're thrown out of the program if you don't attend Shia. Um, try to meet the needs of the Haredim community. But there's no situation right now of a fear of assimilation. And I think, like I said, the years of 18, 19, and 20 learning in yeshiva are critical. Uh, those are years that the boys will have. They'll be built up strongly, and then they'll have their, their two years of services, so mm-hmm. and then they're free to do what they want to do. Well, we have, let's go to Beit Shemesh. And Zev and Beit Shemesh, thank you for calling on TalkLine Commun- from listening on TalkLineCommunications.com. Zev and Beit Shemesh, good, good morning to you. And Beit Shemesh, your question for MK Haver. Rabbi Dov it, it was, uh, it, it was le- less of a question. I actually live uh, across the street from Dov Lippmann, Um and I want to tell you personally say that I know I know him. Um, he actually was uh, a student of my father uh, back in high school, and he's incredibly sincere. Uh, it amazes me that you know someone comes out uh, trying to help the Haredi community, really from you know the bottom of his heart with honest intentions. And instead of saying, you know, thank you for, for you know, caring about us, for trying to help our education, they're slandering him, they're, you know, they're going after his integrity, things that you know, are completely irrelevant. He, he honestly believes, in, and so do I, and in fact, I've even met with many Haredim who say, you know, at the end of the day, our Gdolim might not agree, but we need to get educated. We, we can't continue, you know, the, the way that it's going. It's not sustainable. And Dov is you know, simply trying to do what's right. And, you know, he's got broad shoulders. He's willing to accept the responsibility for that. But uh, the slander is just unbelievable to me uh, and, and, and unfair. Rabbi Lippin, nice to communicate here in New York through a neighbor of, of yours in Beit Shemesh, but uh, continue. I mean, the truth is, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure who it is. I'm trying to figure out from the voice, but I will say that... Uh, it's a it's Zef, a really, Zef, can I say uh, your last the, name? The words of, Zef, can I say your last word, name? The words sure, of support. Sure. Zev Hef, it's Zev Hef, Rabbi Lichman, who's responding to you. The words, the words of support have been continuous. My email box is filled, well, especially from Chari Dim, where people come and meet with me, and they say, keep going, we need this to happen. And, and this is what, this is, it, it, it's clear from so many angles that it's the right thing, it's the best thing for the community, and, uh, you know, there's no sinister intention, there's no, oh, there's an attempt to make people less religious. And I want to go one step further. It's not just me saying that. Uh, unfortunately, People don't know Yair, people don't know Education Minister Shai Perone, they don't know the people in our party who I've had a chance to get to know. Of course I would not have gotten involved to begin with if Yair was anti-Torah or anti-religious or anti haribi And you know, people make associations with his father, which is just unfair. And uh, hopefully, over time, people will start to realize that the goal here is not that anybody should be less religious. The goal is that the community itself should be more sustainable and, and thrive. And, and really contribute to uh, the state of Israel. Anyway, but Zev, and, Zev Hecht, uh, that's who it is calling, by the way, Rabbi 
Rabbi Lippman, your neighbor in Beit Shemesh. Okay, thank you. Zev, thank you for calling in from Beit Shemesh. Thank you for listening. No problem. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Before we take our next call, uh, Rabbi Lippman, I think part of the problem is, and you talk about Yar Lapid, he's made it a point of saying he will not sit in the Knesset with Haredi, obviously sitting with you and your Haredi, but he meant the Haredi parties. I think he set off a tone where anything that emulates, that emanates from from that from your party is considered traif because of the attitude and the tone that he portrayed from the get-go regarding the Haredim. There's a very big difference between the Haredi political leadership and the Haredim. The average Haredi you meet in the street is a wonderful, uh, sincere, value-centered, uh, chesed-oriented mamin who's trying to do the Ratzon Hashem every single day and has no intention of forcing his way on somebody else. Unfortunately, the Haredi political leadership has taken out a different flag, and they've taken out a flag of, it's us against them, uh, we're here just to care about ourselves, uh, we're, we're not interested in even helping boys who want to go to work. My goodness gracious, boys in the community who want to go to work, and we're, and we're holding people in. And that is the leadership that we cannot sit together with because there are things that need to be done for the country in general, uh, which involve compromise, and they wouldn't do that. The night of the elections, the year was prepared. We talked about it. He said as broad a coalition as possible. The next morning, the Haredi parties, uh, and I emphasize the Haredi parties, not the Haredi, the Haredi parties, the leaders, the political leaders, said, we're a status quo, nothing is going to change. How can you say status quo, nothing is going to change? There's a difference when there's 400 young men being supported or 60,000, and the people who need money, and the people who are, who are starving, and the people who are struggling, and the boys are going off the derech. And you can't say status quo, we always have to adapt. You know, going back to the beginning of the, of the 20th century, the, there wasn't adapt, adapt, that adaptation that was made for girls to start having education, because otherwise they were going to go off. Of course we adapt, you never say status quo, and that was Chaval. Our guest is Rabbi Dov Lippman from Israel. He's a member of Knesset. Yes, go ahead. good in this country. We'd like to take a break, Rabbi Lippman. When we come back, we take some more phone calls. You're limited time with us. 212-769-1925. If you're already on the line with us, we'll get uh, to you. Try to get to email ZEV at TalkLineCommunications.com. We're going to be right back. Hurricane Sandy wreaked havoc on our home, schools, and community centers. With much of our community destroyed by the hurricane, Gold Star Restoration is here to help you restore your home from storm damages by completely drying out your floor ceilings, walls, doors, and make you feel at home again. Did you know that mold contamination can be dangerous to your health? Why wait? Let Gold Star take care of it. Gold Star specializes in sewer backups, cleanups, water damages and extraction, mold removal, fire and smoke restoration. Contact Gold Star today for your free consultation. I did. Gold Star has 24-hour emergency services with technicians on call 24 hours a day. So call right now, 1-877-95-WATER. That's 1-877-95-WATER. Rabbi Dove Lippman is on his way to the Knesset. He's only going to have time for one more question. So the question I have for you, Rabbi Lippman, is what about conservative and reform rabbis? How should the state deal with them? Should they be recognized by the state? That's part of the fight with women on the wall as well. Yeah, it's obviously a very complicated issue. Uh, I mean, at a certain level, you'd, you'd rather have uh, the, the religion and politics removed completely, and that way you, know, you don't have to deal with this issue. But at the moment, what we're saying is, that uh, we, we can't have a situation where a government is giving money uh, just towards one group and not towards other groups. And obviously it would be based on requests and based on, you know, where, where there are requests for programs, but that's essentially uh, the approach that we're taking. I want to say something else. Um, you know, during the campaign, I heard this a lot from secular Israelis, young secular Israelis. So people have to understand they do not have an agenda of anti-Torah. It's not the beginning of the state anymore, whether it's a battle over will there be Torah or mitzvahs in this country. And they said, I hate Judaism. This is the quote. I hate Judaism, and I hate that I hate Judaism. Meaning, we, we on the religious side, have done, using the government, have forced a lot of things on people. And I'm not saying we should be breaking halacha. I'm not saying we have to be smart and, and be cautious and figure out where can we be lenient, where can we not be lenient, where can we give a little space, where can we not. 
And I think the moment we do that, we'll start seeing our mass. We'll start seeing people embracing being proud Jews in, in the state of Israel, um, and that's a critical thing. It's kind should of we get rid of those? Should we get rid of the um, the chief rabbinic because they're the one that's accused of having turning people off by some of their right. practices? It, 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 if it was up to me, this is not my party stance. If it was up to me, I do think there's a place to say there's no need for that. Let it be the way I had it growing up, which is you know that everybody does their thing, and and uh, and hopefully Torah can flourish, and we can uh, show people uh, the beauty of our ways. And that's the bottom line, by the way. I just want to end with this point. You know, my dream is that the the high tech quarter of Ranana should be filled with Haredim, and they did, and the law firms in Tel Aviv, and the government offices in Yerushalayim. But, but the point is that the the secular community does not know who Haredim are. And they just have a negative perspective because all they see are either the extremists who do crazy things or the political leaders who say crazy things. And instead, they don't see that there's a regular value sense of people who are Shomer Torah Mitzvahs day in and day out. The same way, as far as the Chodim of Rachel, right? everybody else that we know who were upstanding the Torah observant people who were in a, a career and they had influence on the world around them, we could be having, in the most positive of ways, a tremendous influence on the state of Israel by just being there, by breaking down the walls and being out there as part of the country and saying, it's not us against them. It's not a war. We're one nation. We're one. But but, but in lieu of every that, single, uh, every single source that I know, every mm-hmm. source that I know says that Geula comes when we when we have Achdus, and no one's asking us to stop keeping Torah mitzvot. Let's not force our way on them. And we need that. But here's in line with you saying this is the final question. It's email. While Rabbi Lippin comes across extremely sincere and well collected, isn't he concerned that he's being used to set up an agenda that seemingly is a systematic catastrophe that is much broader in design to depress the from community? I guess they meant to say oppressed from not depressed, but okay, that's what it said. Um, if, any, if every single person uh, that thought that way had a half hour to sit down with Yair Lapid and talk to him one on one about the seri- serious issues like I have, they'd have a different perspective. That's all I can say. They, they see that no one is being used, it's sincere, it's real, and uh, I think that only good things will come of the breaking down the barriers and working together, strengthening Torah on the one hand and reaching out and being part of Am Yisrael on the other. I want to thank you, Rabbi Dov Lippin. He's literally going through the doors of the Knesset as we're speaking. Thank you for being part of our program. We look forward to having you back. It's important to have the dialogue, the conversation, so thank you for participating. Participating. We look forward to having you back again soon to continue our discussion. My pleasure. Thank you very much. Anybody who has further questions, I apologize. We're literally at the Knesset entrance. Like you said, you can email my office. You can find the email address on the Knesset website or via Facebook. And I'd be more than happy to answer questions and continue the conversation. I thank you and Shavuot Tov, or at least good morning to you in Jerusalem.